I love how Mike has done this. They're battery powered aerators. I mean, it's clear that you're very passionate and protective over your fish. Oh, wow. Look at this. I got some. This is an OB Red Zebra. Wow. You don't have to tell Kenan twice to get in the pond. He'll yeah. go right in. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here with a very special guest today. Uh, this is Michael Patrick O'Neill. Don't let the name fool you. This guy's Brazilian, and he is a underwater photographer, photographer in general. You got a really cool Instagram, and that's kind of how we got to know each exactly, other. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, the one of the good things about the internet is it brings like-minded people together. He travels the world. He does a lot of uh, talks at schools to get kids interested in the outdoors and reading and writing and and science in general. So he's a man after my own heart. It's all about education. So we linked up, and he knows my friend Paul from Angels Hatchery, who got us started here with our beautiful cichlid pond here that the good old aquascape folks designed for us and you've got some fish you want to kind of give a new home a year ago i didn't have one aquarium now i have seven. Oh, mike and you got the bug again you got the bug i yeah. love it it's like cultivating a garden it's an amazing uh hobby and i just breed these fish and I um, love them so much I wanted to find a good home cool. for them instead of just selling them. All right, let's have a look at these fish. Right. We put them in the uh, shade and you know, I love how Mike has done this. You know, we, we've got the aerators, they're battery powered aerators. I mean, he is, it's clear that you're very passionate and protective over your fish. They're my kids. They're your kids, I hear you, man. Um, well, the thing is, guys, you know, we have it set up here as a large ecosystem. Uh, these fish, and I explained to Mike, like, hey man, they're gonna go in the pond, they're gonna go in the big pond, and uh, you know, I do my best to keep everyone safe, but it is a large ecosystem. So I'm sure that every once in a while, one of those snakes gets a fish. That being said, I'm extremely hopeful and excited uh, about these fish here. And how many do we have in here? I don't even know. Okay. Uh, Kenan, but uh, oh wow, look at this! I got some nice ones. Yeah, uh, beautiful. I got fish here from Germany. Wow. I got fish here that I raised at home. Uh, they're really cool fish, and I uh, unfortunately don't have the room for them, but I wanted to make sure they went to a good place, so, cool. so here right. we are. Good deal. So these, and some of these are zebras, you said? Correct. Or? Yeah, uh, this is what we have here. We have... Um, yeah, point them out, because I'm still learning my fish. Uh, I'm going to get... Well, the first things first, when you handle fish, you should always have your hands wet. Okay. So you're going to notice, because the fish has a protective slime coat, and if you remove that with your dry hand or with a towel, you can injure the fish. So you guys are going to notice that I'm getting my hands wet a little bit. Okay. So my dry skin doesn't injure the fish. So right here I have uh, some of my favorites and I have so many of these. This is an OB red zebra. Wow. This is a male. And the males develop, if you're lucky, an OB pattern. And this is one of the kids here. What does OB pattern mean? Uh, originally it meant orange blotch. Okay. So now it's a catch-all term. Here's one of the kids. Oh, wow. And I just have too many males. And okay. these fish are highly territorial. And one misconception that people have with African cichlids, especially umbunas that are rock-dwelling fish from Lake Malawi, is they go to a pet shop and they say, I want to buy one fish or I want to buy two fish. And unfortunately, what you're doing is you're sentencing one of those fish to die because they're so aggressive and so territorial. And you have to remember, they're not doing this because they're mean. They're just doing this because this is in their genetic DNA for millennia. And they're territorial little guys. Mm. They're feisty. So the best way to keep them is the way that you keep them here, the way that I keep them at home, and the way I'm keeping them in this bucket because you can see that they're calm and when you crowd them a bit you dissipate the violence okay. so one fish is not gating it all the time okay it doesn't work a hundred percent of the time but it works at least 95 percent of the time i pulled these out of an aquarium with uh it had uh it's an 125 gallon aquarium i had 80 fish in there i had lost track because they were just breeding and unfortunately once in a while you find that a beautiful dead fish because it just got its butt kicked. So it got stressed. and It's stressed it. and then they just fight. And these guys here, I had four males, way too many. So I'm giving Keenan uh, three males. They're beautiful. They're a Travasi, okay. Shalumba. They're, this guy's not dominant right now, but they have a beautiful orange blue 
pink hue to them. They're gorgeous. So when you say he's not dominant now, will he develop that dominance? He will. The top guy there will develop. And the cool thing about your pod here, what did you say, 13,000 gallons? No, it's about 30,000 30, gallons. 30,000 yeah. gallons. There's enough room for everybody. Yep. So they most likely, I believe all of them are going to develop that dominant curl color. Oh, very cool. Well, you know, that's what I notice in the pond, that yeah. certain fish are hanging out in certain areas of rocks. Exactly. There are little caves they go in. They, exactly. You know, my Du Boise seem to do that. Yeah, they, you they, know, all, they, they love the rocks. It's really cool. It's yeah. almost like reef fish it's in fresh water. It's These guys are the equivalent of damselfish. Okay. And uh, I love these fish so much that what inspired me to get back in the hobby is two years ago, I went to dive in Lake Malawi. And man, awesome. I have been to Australia five times, Fiji, New Zealand. We were just discussing, I swam with anacondas, mako sharks. I've done a lot in 30 years. And this is one of my favorite <laughs> trips. Why? Because in the world of wildlife photography, everything has been done so many times already that I thought, let me do something different, something that's a little bit unexplored. And Lake Malawi is so off the beaten track. Oh, wow. And it's like an inland sea, the water's crystal clear. Uh, it's like diving in the Caribbean, because you're surrounded by these beautiful fish. And back to your point, Kenan, they're all in the rocks. That's awesome. That's so awesome. that's where you're seeing them. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go ahead, we'll lift this out. Okay, ready? Yep. One, two, three. All right. Beautiful. So, how Paul taught me to do this, our friend at Angels Hatcher, and we're going to get a little storm here, good old Florida, uh, is we've already got a tub set up with pond water. So, we're going to add their water to the pond water, and that's going to slowly acclimate them. All right, and I also brought, I think it's in here somewhere. I thought I had a thermometer. Oh, here oh we yeah, go. there I is. I saw the thermometer. Yep. So, right now the waters are at 80. All right, let's see. So, it might be a little warmer. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit warmer. So let's so, see. We're gonna. Uh, what I recommend is. Let's get a little more. I think this water's been sitting out for a while. Yeah. So let's get more pond water in, and yeah, we could probably dunk this here. You and yeah, I. Th yeah. This is super, this is much warmer than this. One. Okay. Let's just get a dunk here, right. and we'll get some warm water in. All right. Now you pull out. I don't need your hand yet. Thank you. Perfect. Now let's. Oh, you know what we did? <laughs> uh oh. We have a thermometer. There it is, right there by your left hand. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, good thinking. Where, where are we at? Okay, this is a little bit warmer. Uh, how can we do this? I would recommend getting uh, a net. Not a net, but like a little. Uh, oh, a bucket. Okay, yeah. To start mixing. The Copy water that. Apparently. I got you. Here, you know what? These guys haven't eaten today. I'm gonna chuck right. some flukers floating frenzy. Can I? You're a photographer. Do you yeah, mind you holding it. that? All right. <laughs> Just hang on and point it at this. Watch how my fish respond to eating. These guys are happy fish. Now, That's what are you awesome. feeding them? These guys are, this is actually turtle food. They're getting a little turtle food uh -huh. with some krill, but it's a, uh, it is basically, um, you know, a turtle food, but they are eating it. And then the other thing that I've been doing with these guys is, they're eating everything in the pond. I mean, uh -huh. there's algae. Um, yeah, that's what they're algae eaters. Right. Uh, naturally, they're primarily vegetarian. All right, so what we got here is this. What we could do, if you'd like to, you could just take this and kind of scoop out the water and plug it into this one right, so we, we can yeah. start, yeah. So we can start the uh, process of getting these guys dialed in. Mm -hmm. And uh, true to form, Florida is gonna open up the skies on us, but I'm not afraid of getting wet. I don't know about you, man. Well, that's part of my life. I hear you. So this is gonna slowly acclimate these fish to the water that I get, you know, he does a lot of dechlorination. He lives in a more cities uh, setup. So he's on city water, which as you know, is treated with different uh, fluorides and chlorine. So he does a lot of dechlorinization at his house. Um, my water comes straight out of the ground. And the cool thing about cichlids to my knowledge is that they're a hard water fish. They, they're more, I believe it's alkaline. They like a more alkaline environment. Yeah, absolutely. Hard water, uh, lots of minerals, very alkaline. Okay, so that, if you look around guys, all these rocks, Florida limestone, which creates that alkaline environment exactly, that they like. Yeah, the Florida water is perfect for cichlids. Cool. You don't even have to test for pH. Wow. Because it comes out, even in Palm Beach Gardens where I live, it comes in really, really uh, awesome. alkaline. Very cool. And how cool is this, man? We get to meet somebody who does a lot of fun stuff with animals out there in the wild. So this guy is a true adventurer and photographer. He mentioned very kind of 
he, he brushed over it, but he uh, actually swam with an anaconda in Brazil. We got some photos. We're going to throw those up for you guys to check it out. I mean, you got face. What was that like, man? Was far, let me tell you, it was uh, the most adrenaline filled encounter I've ever had in my life. I have uh, been diving for 30 years. I have almost 4,000 dives. Wow. Uh, and I went to this place in southwestern Brazil called Bonito and which is known for crystal clear springs just like North Florida and my goal was to get in the water with a snake with an anaconda and uh, being Brazilian I know Brazilians one day they said we found a huge snake and I thought I'm they're gonna put me in with a black racer you yeah know, it was kind of like a joke so we went out there and we looked and floating on a on an island of vegetation was a snake and man let me tell you i could not believe it it was the size of a bathtub wow that's oh, how oh. thick it was and uh it was uh around five o'clock this is winter time in brazil it's starting to get dark and my guide says if you're going in doing it now because you don't have you're not gonna have a second chance let me tell you i was so nervous i'm not a snake guy yeah like you are i couldn't stop trembling wild and the snake was underneath the boat with her head in the vegetation and i said to the guide hey marcos uh <laughs> let's go in let's go over here i'm like hey marcos the snake uh the head is buried in the vegetation he said just pull the tail and she'll move <laughs> and i was this guy's crazy and he was making fun of me because he's done this many, many yeah. more times so long story short the snake crawled through the vegetation and i went around this little island and man, you'll see this in the photos, but she was just staring at me. Wow. And uh, the amazing thing about the anaconda, it was not afraid. And when I got closer with my camera, that snake got closer to me. It was molting. It was trying to smell me underwater. Uh, the little that I know about uh, anacondas is they can be very aggressive out of the water, especially along the edges of- Right. Uh, and they, by the way, they're the world's heaviest snake. Yep. And they live around water because it helps them with mobility because they're such a big animal. And, uh, but in the water, in that crystal clear water, it was a puppy. It was never aggressive. It was trying to smell me. And it, and the coolest thing is it swam by me like this far away and it was like a train. It just kept going. Kept going. And Incredible. Unbelievable. And I'm glad I did that that day because the next day we went back and we only found the skin uh because they had shed and we never saw it again incredible so that, it was unbelievable yeah what an experience that's a great story thanks for sharing that man uh again you guys need to check out his instagram because he's not just singing it he brings it man he does all these really cool adventures all right so we got a little bit of a storm i'm gonna go ahead and just let this pass and we'll finish up the video by releasing these fish okay we are uh in a break here so what do you got? How's our temperatures? I think it's, I think it's good. Let's, let's get cool. this little jar here. All right. And what I'm going to do is get the other GoPro so we can get some underwater shots when we put the fish in. So these guys, we got a nice little rainstorm. Oh, that's Kate. There you go, Michael. We're having fun, Kate. Come look at the new fish we're getting. Yeah. Yeah, Kate was in there doing her uh, calisthenic workout there. That's what she does. And wow. there's some nice fish and we're just acclimating. So, oh. so many residents for you guys. There yeah, go. it's good. Love them. It's about the same. All right, very good. So the temps have equalized uh -huh. and we've added some of our water into his. So now, um, you know, I think if you're comfortable, would you like to start transferring them? Yeah, let's see. Let me just do one check here. Where's sure. The little... Would you mind grabbing this, love? Thank you. I'm going to operate our... Um... You going to go in the water? Uh, yeah. Are you going into? Not today. Not I today. Uh, didn't bring my underwater camera. Ah. I, uh, Oops, I'm going to have to come back here and. Uh, yeah, with your cameras, man. With a camera. That's right. You don't have to tell Kenan twice to get in the pond. He'll yeah. go right in. Let me get my camera. Uh, this is the fun thing about this ecosystem pond. Aquascape really did a good job with it because not only does it cool you off, but it's more fun than a pool, you know? Yeah. I prefer to. Uh -huh actually be in the water with my animals and this is awesome i get this what i'm gonna do Kenan, yep. is I'll, I'll have one in my hand 
Oh, that's awesome. I think he's going to be happy. Right. Was that a female? That was a male OB okay. zebra. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think they're going to be happy. Like, there's, I, I already have some zebras in here. Okay, check this guy out. This guy's a gorgeous fish. Look at this guy. Wow. Uh, he fights and fights at home. I think he's going to be happy there. Wow, instinctively they go right to the rock. Yeah. Here's another male. This guy's gorgeous. Look at him in the natural light. Beautiful fish. That's a uh, Shalumba male right there. <laughs> this is great. This is really cool because you guys know that I'm not a, a fish expert, so it's nice to have someone that really knows. Little guy, male OB zebra. I got a lot of these guys for you. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. I like those ones, the speckled ones. Yeah, they're yeah. so nice. They're like little cows. Yeah. Here's another male um, Shalumba. Look at this fish. Look how gorgeous. You call this a Shalumba? Shalumba Travasi. Look at the colors on this thing. Is that the Latin name? Uh, no, that's the location name. Oh, cool. And uh, I'll give you the Latin names. But he's right now not dominant because he's going to flare up. And with the natural sunlight, you're going to look spectacular. Well, that's what I've noticed. I. Uh, a lot of people who come here mm -hmm. keep fish, you know, in aquariums. Yeah, you don't see say, them. Oh my God, your colors are just incredible. Exactly. Just like reptiles, that that natural sunlight, sunlight, uh -huh. that that wavelength, uh -huh. just really makes them pop. All right here's another male. This one was from Paul. Oh, cool. He's a oh. Super nice guy. And Paul certainly knows his fish. He sure does. Here's another male Shalumba. This is a, um, I'll give you all the names, but uh, um, hold on, where's the fast little guy? Okay, here we go, buddy. Ah. <laughs> okay. Look at this guy. Wow. These guys have a little nose, and uh, it's an adaptation for them to uh, eat algae, scrape the algae off the rocks uh, where they're where they're found in nature in Lake Malawi. Hmm. Another one born at home, another OB male. It's so cool that you produce these fish yourself. Oh, they're awesome. And I would have a lot more, I just don't have the room. Wow. Here's another OB male. Well, feel free to share. Right. We, well, have we have plenty of room. room. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I, my main concern is I love these fish. Uh, I don't want them to be mistreated or end up in a poor home. And the minute I walked here and I saw this beautiful pond, I'm like, this is a great place for them. And, uh, wow. well, that means a lot. Um, it means a lot when you know people see how much work I put into the reptiles. Yeah. And I really couldn't have done it without this partnership with oh, the friends at Look at this beautiful fish. Yeah, it's great, Michael. Born at home. That's great. Guy. All right. I mean, they, they really they take to it like they've been here forever. I know. They're that's the, the that's a good sign. They're gonna make lots of new friends. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, lots of friends, and they got their own. Their own lodging too when you want to be alone. So it works out good, man. Alright, another one. This is a guy born at home. Look at this gorgeous fish. Wow. That is awesome. Alright, how are we doing? How many fish we got left? Quite a few. Alright, well I'll tell you what guys. Tell me, tell me this what video, what... this video would be three hours long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to let these fish go. I just want to thank Mike uh, for trusting me with these animals and for sharing his experiences. Um, I really, I wouldn't do a video introducing you to someone if I don't think you guys should really follow along and see what he's doing. Very interesting guy. We had a chance to talk while the rain was happening and actually has a nonprofit called Into the Blue. And basically his nonprofit is about getting kids, like you mentioned, uh, sometimes people that haven't even seen the ocean. Uh, getting these people to interact with their environments and you do that by sharing your knowledge and books. Uh, he has a book available. Um, there'll be links in the description and you can also find him on Instagram. Anywhere else they can find you is does Into the Blue have a website? 
uh, not yet, but Facebook. Uh, just go to Michael Patrick O'Neill Photography. And I'm mainly active in uh, Instagram and Facebook for cool. now. Okay. That's where I post all my photo projects, my school presentations, my books. Right. And you know what else, guys? He's actually a published photographer with National Geographic, works on documentaries for them as well, uh, and was involved in some of the Shark Week, Shark, Week. Uh, yeah. Shark Fest. Very cool. Documentaries on the mullet migration, documentaries on the gar, which is a prehistoric fish that like a living dinosaur. And one other thing, I have to cut you off. One other thing that's interesting about Michael is so many of you ask, how can I get a job that revolves around wildlife? Michael worked in the corporate world till what, 1991 to what, 2001? 2001. Till 2001 and just said, I'm done with it. And if you have a passion and a talent and the will, you can achieve anything, guys. So I just want people like this to be introduced to you. Uh, really a pleasure, man. Cool. We'll get you back in here. We'll and maybe maybe we'll we can get out. I'd love to get out in the field and see how you work. Let's do it. All right, man. Very cool. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue releasing these fish. And uh, follow Michael. Thanks so soon. much. Take care. Thanks.